This is a face marked by theological studies, scarred, if I may, by theological studies. Look at this transformed face. <laughs> There are uh, many things that will help you in your pursuit of theological studies. These are five tips for anyone who wants to study at a theological or biblical school. And let's face it, you, you are investing a lot, emotionally, financially, so might as well make the most out of it. Capitalism. <laughs> and do stay till the end, because there's an important bonus tip I, I want to share with you, and it comes right at the end, so just- Hi, if we haven't met, my name is Octavio and I graduated with a Master's of Arts in Theological Studies from Regent College. Regent College is a non-denominational international school here in Vancouver, Canada. You know, as an international student myself, I had to learn many things uh, in my journey of theological studies, and many things I had to learn the hard way. And I thought I'd, you know, share my wisdom, my acquired wisdom with you before you start your theological studies. I used to have hair when I started, full head of hair, just like, like Rambo, which is like, Ponytail. Let's start, shall we? My tip number one. There is a difference, a noticeable difference between professors that are practitioners and professors who are thinkers, you know, the big idea professor. And the difference between these two is subtle. You won't get it in the first class or the first month or maybe even in the first year. And why do I mention that? Because this is important when you start taking classes. The big ideas professor. This is the professors that challenge your ideas, thoughts, perspectives, worldview with big ideas, with great rhetoric. Mostly read. They read, they read a lot. It's kind of annoying. While you listen, they're just reading their papers. It's, you know, academia. Less engaging, less interactive. Academia, yeah, whoop, whoop, exciting. Nah, they challenge your assumptions. This big ideas professor tend to spend most of the time uh, alone in their office, you know, thinking big thoughts, reading big books, and writing a lot. But then there's this other breed of professors, the practitioners, whose very life challenges you at every freaking level. This type of professors who are also big thinkers and renowned scholars, they tend to spend their time with people on the ground, living out a ministry of some sort. Now what I've described is kind of the opposite of a spectrum. You know, the truth of the matter is that you won't remember much of what you heard in class. You will remember like 5% of what you heard in class, you know, after taking 25, 30, 40 classes. But you know what you'll remember mostly? The life of the practitioner professor and the impact it had in your life. Once you take one of the classes, you will notice a difference in the approach to theology, to the Bible. And their approach tends to be more engaged. It's more filled with heart, filled with love, compassion, grace, as opposed to just Amazing ideas, but f cold. And you get the sense that, you know, big thinkers, big idea professors, they know what they're talking about. But practitioner professors, they really, really know what they're talking about. Tip number two, point number two. Everyone at seminary, you know, your classmate to the right, to the left, to the front, to the back. You know, they're all struggling with anxiety, with fear, trying to fit in trying to, to, to feel love. And I say this because you're gonna be there and you're gonna, you're gonna struggle, you know, with, with, with feelings, with, with family, with death. And it feels like nobody else is struggling because they're thinking big thoughts, they have interesting accents, and they're asking great questions, and they know a lot about the Bible. So they feel, it feels like they have it all together. When you're there, you're gonna feel like you're the only one struggling with human issues. The rest, no, they're theologians. So don't be fooled, everyone is struggling. So be gracious and be kind and show love. And, and let's rant about this point. You that are thinking about uh, going into graduate school, you're gonna find it's this, this new breed. And the breed that I'm talking about are young 20 year olds. You know those young 20 year olds, the annoying type who think that just because they're in graduate school, they know how life works. You know, early 20s, because they think they can write a paper on transubstantiation or, or the great chiasm. They think they know how life works. You know, those that disrespectful kind who talk back at their elders? Even their questions are weird. Like, what kind of question is that? How, why are you asking that type of question? Why on earth does it matter? Like, what a stupid question. <laughs> oh, young 20 year olds, they suck. <laughs> Point number three. So if you happen to have the privilege to go to an international school, and by international school, I mean uh, schools that have, you know, people from all ethnicities and backgrounds and races, you know, they have white people, black people, East Asian people, Middle, Middle Eastern people, super Latinos, you know, during your first week of school, you think, oh, this might be what heaven looks like. People of all colors and nations just seeking after the Lord. You might have to rethink those thoughts or at least lower your expectations. 
a lot because most internationals and more most locals you know they try to mingle at least for the for the first couple of months you know it's fun it's diverse you try to meet people it's cool but most people tend to divert or default to their own cultures really quickly people who share their own uh, cultural background, their own ethnicity, their own color, their own way of thinking, the insider language, the slang. And I totally understand this. So don't be shocked if your theological school or biblical school looks more like a prison than a theological school. You know, the whites with the whites, the Aryans. Those polar bears over in the corner, that's Aryan vanguard, the Aviers. Those white boys control the dope trade. The blacks with the blacks, the BGA. See a black dude with a comb over there? That's bona fide. He runs the BGA, the Black Guerrilla Army. Don't take nothing from him. You know, loud Latinos with even louder Latinos. You know, the fun table. You have, and of course you have East Asians with East Asians, Indians with Indians. But you know, that's life. Point number four, be true to your personal questions. You, you know, there are a bunch of reasons why you're going uh, into uh, a master's in theology or biblical studies. You have some questions, you have some very personal questions. But wait, when you get there, it's really easy to lose focus and wrestle with other people's questions or even the professor's questions. You know, the professors that have been studying this for so long, their questions, they don't resonate with you necessarily. You know, the gap between you and the professor in terms of age, in terms of culture, it's a huge Grand Canyon huge. So the questions they're asking you to think, they're good, I mean, they're amazing, but they cannot replace your own question. And a lot of those questions will get reframed and, and a lot of the, those questions will get some answers even when you're not addressing them directly, that is true. But don't forget about your personal questions. They, absolutely matter. And theology and biblical studies are not all about you, and I really hope you understand that. But theological ideas, they've always come from deep personal questions. And point number five, and thank you for being here with me still, you better learn how to read fast. And I mean fast by, by speed reading. Now before you go. Do you wanna see what my first semester looked like? This. I had to read every, and I had to read throughout the whole Old Testament. And this is not counting the PDFs. You know, they would shower you on PDFs. And this is the required reading. You know, there were other kids just reading for fun. They had space to read for fun. The crap are you talking about? First semester. And not just fast, sadly, you have to learn how to skim read. You know what skim read? You don't really read the whole thing, you, you kind of, Skim, you know, that's what skim reading is. And it's not super satisfying, but you just gotta. And then, then, then you, you learn how to enjoy skim reading. Now it's like, oh, I can skim read and I can get most of it, but it's not internalizing what you skim read. It's, it's really difficult. So yeah, learn how to read fast, fast. And this is the bonus tip. This is the bonus tip. See, this is, this is what, what you get for staying till the end. Invest in few friendships, not many, just few. It's cool to have a lot of friends. It's cool to have many relationships. It, it's, it's just good, it's good. It, it, it's good, it's, it's super good, it's good. You know, and after everyone leaves, those somewhat superficial uh, friendships that you gave them time, but not enough time, they kind of fade away. You know, they all back, they go back to their cities, back to their countries, and they kind of fade away. But the deep ones, the, the ones you, are, you invested even more time, uh, they tend to stick, and they might be fundamental for the rest of your life. So it makes more sense to invest more time in those. You know, if you clicked with somebody, with a couple, with, with a couple of friends, girls, whatever, if you clicked with them, try to invest, give them more time. Instead of giving everybody your attention and everybody your loves and hugs, just try to, just narrow it down. You know, you build deeper relationships that may last you throughout your whole life. There you go. If this was the first time, you know, one-on-one -on -one you and me, I'm glad you stayed to the end. Uh, if you wanna keep watching some videos, just subscribe. Hit the bell notification. If you like this video, if you liked it, just beep, hit the like and stick around. I'm, I'm gonna release video after video after video. And just, you know, I, I would love to meet you in the comments. Just let me know who you are. I'm gonna respond to every comment. I'm gonna read every comment. Yes, cause you know, I don't know what to do with my life. So click away, click on more videos and see you there.